Whoa, hang on guys, haven't we got a narrowboat we're restoring to cruise the entire river and canal network for the next two to three years? It certainly isn't gonna happen if we're just staying out partying on our first day back. But celebrations were in order. And though pretty badly hungover, we've still got a job to do here, guys. So finally back from our three week cruise to get the blacking on the boat done. And finally our whole survey. Check back on the last episodes if you haven't seen that, but it's all looking good. Hi guys, how's it going? Hi guys, so as you can see, we are back in the marina after our blacking and hull survey. Everything is looking great and lovely to some extent. So you know what this means? Becca had better get her DIY head back on. There's only one thing for it, hand me my overalls. Okay guys, so what better time than ever to do a very quick walkthrough of what we still need to do on the boat. Okay, so the water tank down here, we're itching to get cracking with that. We've already given it a tiny little sand without me uh, climbing fully into it. Do you remember? I was like dangling in. <laughs> but I'm actually gonna climb down there now in the next weeks and actually get proper stacking because I think you've, it's quite a large sort of area and you've really got to get in there if you're gonna get all the spots. That is in here, but I'm gonna have to get all this stuff out. And the water tank starts about here and it goes all the way under, probably a two, two about here. So you've really got to get in there. Also, this is the area where the first original leak has been coming in from. We're going to be getting our cratch covers literally in the next few weeks I'm thinking so that should definitely cancel out any leaks coming in. Pat the uh, surveyor told us it was more than likely coming from this little area down here so at some point we're going to have to use two pack and paint over the area and hopefully that will hide away some of the little holes. So the whole living room area here still got to take the floor up in here and scrape all the rust like we did in the bilges in all the other rooms. We've also Got to do the, the walls. See, we've got all this sort of horrible, well, it's not that horrible, but carpet stuff on the walls. We're gonna take that off and paint it and make it look lovely. Take you into the kitchen, guys. Also, Becca is gonna be cracking on with a lovely scaffolding kitchen worktops today. And then we're finally gonna get them placed like in the kitchen. And then we can start rebuilding sort of the bits underneath too. See, it all needs to get put back together again. It's a, uh, we need to cut, work out how to cut this out so we can get the butler sink in there. Is your butler sink? Can you see it? Bloody massive. Yes, it looks like a urinal at the moment, but it won't once it's installed. The butler sink's also gonna be quite heavy. So we're gonna have to build a sort of stand for the butler sink as well. We've got the Audi boiler. We're gonna keep hold of that for our hot water for the time being until we know how energy efficient it is with the old gas, because supposedly people have been known to get for a whole bottle of gas in one week using the Audi boiler, but we've heard good things about them too. And um, you know, it's good to recycle these things. It's no good jumping straight in and getting the combi. Let's see, let's see how we get on with the uh, Audi boiler. If it is energy efficient enough, if it isn't, the Maverick is itching to get a combi boiler installed. So I'm all for it, but they have their problems too. The bedroom area guys. The home of the Titan. The bedroom area is pretty much done, I think, really. I know it's, it's the home of all the junk at the moment. We've got the mattress in the living room, like you've seen, but it's very livable. We'll just move all this junk into its designated areas, probably the bloody bin, <laughs> and uh, move the mattress back, and that'll all be lovely, really. Obviously, we've got the hatches too that need finishing off, and we especially need to work out how we're gonna be locking them, guys. So any, any tips on how to lock our hatch doors because when we're cruising out and about you're going to need a locking system on there aren't you also i'm going to come back to me hatch doors today there's a little job i want to do on these uh, the doors still don't shut properly so i've got some new advice from professional people that should hopefully help get these hatch doors shut properly okay the bathroom and we have been here so many times before guys haven't we but the whole bathroom basically needs doing so yeah we've already got the uh, compost loo there which is brilliant now it's just a case of getting everything put back into the uh, the shower room. We've got all the tiles, we've got the sink, we've got the shower unit, we've got absolutely everything. But we're waiting for the chlorifier and the Maverick to install the chlorifier. Am I saying that right? Because then we know where all the, um, 
the, the pipes and everything go for the hot water and we won't, you know, you end up putting all the tiles back and everything up and then you might have to rip it all back down again and we, we don't want to do it twice. So yeah, once that chlorifies sort of in, then we can start building the shower room. And like I say, we've got all the bits for that. Okay, to the snoring room, guys. This acts really as a spare room at the moment. It was always a spare room. There used to be a bunk bed in here and the cupboards and obviously this is the room where we discovered the horrible leak. At the back down here it was, this was the original spot, but this is a spare room really. Um, I'd like to turn it into a little sort of an extra bedroom so you know me and Bex can get away if someone wants to play a little bit of guitar and just get away from the other one for a little bit. You can come down here and, and also to do the old, uh, the old work for the vlogs and stuff. I think it could be a good little office for that too. And obviously when I'm snoring it will act as a little bedroom. Some of those jobs are essential to do before we go cruising. I think the kitchen and the bathroom have to be done sort of 100% really. We need those two to be functioning and the hot water. So we need the chlorifier from the Maverick to come in too. Jobs like doing the walls, uh, painting them and all this sort of stuff, I reckon we can do en route. But there's just some stuff that you can't do en route, isn't there? The floor as well. I mean, that could in theory be done en route. And on the topic of floors, it's got bloody messy in here recently. Three years of... Ah! The bloody wasp! Oh god, he's a massive spider! Why don't you do your job and eat him? Hey? Then everyone will be happy. Ah! I mean, where are you gonna go? Ah! Oh no, there's loads of wasps! <laughs> oh my god, I think there's one wasp gone. Oh god. A wasp came in, and then by letting the wasp out, a huge spider dropped down, which is here by the fridge, and then a bloody other massive wasp came behind me in the middle. <laughs> so there's like two wasps and this giant spider. But we're all right now. Let's try and rescue this spider. Right, one spider down, and I think the wasps may have gone too. God, I'm on edge now. So what I was trying to say is, in a very comical way, until those little creatures, those bugs, came and ruined it all, was the floor looks a little bit grubby. It's time for me to run the hoover round. Yeah? Basically what a vacuum cleaner does, for those that don't know, is it just sort of sucks up all the sort of dirt from the floor that's collected up since the last time the floor has been vacuum cleaned. The dust particles are collected up in its cylindrical uh, nest. It proceeds to do this with a very successful sucking mechanism. This can either be discarded off straight away or can be collected up through time. I uh, haven't bothered to empty mine yet because I'm a lazy sod. I've also decided to name mine the Titan after its franchise name. Titan, the brand. This isn't essential, but will help with the bonding process, which in the long run will show better results. Enough of the nonsense, guys. I mean, it's not nonsense, is it? It's the Titan. How rude. So do you remember our cratch covers, which are gonna sit over the front here to stop the water getting in? Yeah, Becca has made this piece of wood and she's just finished varnishing it for here in the middle where the uh, cratch covers are going to lay it over. And Alison, who is making our cratch covers, is going to come up a little bit later today and just take some more measurements for it. You cannot wait to get these uh, covers on the front here. If you remember, we've got a leak from the rain that keeps getting in through the front here because we haven't got any covers. So hopefully that will cancel it out. So as you know, we've been gone for three weeks. Safety off. So welcome back, Becca's Kitchen Worktops. So they spend four months making them go this colour from brown, and now we're making them brown again. No, that was to get the soft. <laughs> Apparently, one of our marina neighbours yesterday was telling me that he heard that actually burning the wood um, sort of helps to treat them as well, makes them, protects them. Oh, cool. So, made a mistake. I liked that bit. I thought it was like sort of what you were trying to do. So some bits are sort of like that and some bits aren't. Well you go over it afterwards with the wire brush and it takes it, strips it back a bit. But this just helps bring out like the natural grain in the wood. She says like she knows what she's on about. We're all blagging it aren't we? Every narrow boat is blagging it I think. That's my excuse anyway. We're all blagging it. Some more than others. <laughs> that would be me. 
Hey guys, so after what feels like a long time working on the compost toilet, I'm flitting back into the kitchen and getting back to work on the kitchen worktops. That's the Danish oil. The Danish oil which will sort of waterproof and protect the, um, the wood. Try and bring back its authentic um, scaffolding look. Hmm. Yeah? Okay, so today I am going to finally try and sort out our hatch doors. I know those bloody hatch doors that have been dragging out for months and months now. And even though we've got the new little inlay of wood, they still don't shut properly, do they? Then I thought it could be the old metal hinges, you know, are we going to have to take the metal hinges off and relay them somehow? I mean, that seems very, very complicated. I spoke to Alan at Fox's Marina and he said it's more than likely going to be the wooden sill on the inside of the of the hatch that has just swollen up over time. So I'm going to try and take off the uh, wooden sill, the wooden swollen sill and then see if the hatch doors shut. If they do, then we know it's that and maybe we can put some new seals on there or just sort of grind it down a little bit so that the hatch doors shut properly. Like most things in our vlogs, I can't see us actually completing this task in this episode. It's probably gonna be stretched out over months and months, but we're gonna get one off anyway and see how, see how it goes. How hard can it be removing a screw? Buy a narrow boat, they said. Buy a narrow boat and then slowly, week by week, take it to bits. We haven't actually added anything to the narrow boat yet. We just keep taking stuff off it. All tuning in to watch a fully grown man take a screw out the wall. Oh, here we go. Should just. Wow. I'm so proud of myself. Take this top one out. Reassess the situation. Everything just falls out, doesn't it? Oh my god, there's gonna be loads of spiders in there! Ah! Oh, little eight legged buggers living in my walls! This is the bit we want to get off really. This all this side stuff isn't really relevant, but I think to get this bit off you've got to take the other sort of parts off. Now what's the next process? We've put the oil on and I've just had a radical idea about burning it to get even more of a charred oh, oh yeah. Look. Yeah. yeah, is that because it's the varnish setting like? Oil. Oh the oil. It's like leopard print. Try a few things and just find what we're both happiest with and then settle with that, I think. So I'm going to try sanding a bit now it's in that state and seeing how that changes the look. I'm going to try wire brushing a bit now it's in that state, see how that changes the look. And then we can compare and decide what we like. And then we basically sand it back down again to how it was just before Becca started blasting it with the fire. Hey. So that tones it in a bit more so the lines aren't so distinct like if you look at that section yeah. compared to that section. So before I start taking the entire frame off I'm going to start with the left side I think and see if it is actually the little bit of wood that's causing the problem. And that goes right through to the other side you have to somehow just prise it out I think. Health and safety first, always. <laughs> Hello you. Right, down the power tools, it's feeding time. Watch their little faces light up with joy. <laughs> We're off. So it looks like the screws actually be welded on from the other side on this side because there's no screw um, screw end coming through that sort of thing might work a bit better looks absolutely dreadful at the moment don't show backs definitely shuts a bit better but as far from being solved so they're just sorting our cratch covers out on the front. Have a look here. Then pull that across and do exactly the same. So I'll just put it on the other side. This is your door, so that is. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Still don't fully shut, but they're a hell of a lot better. 
It's a hell of a lot better. We're going to have to sort something out for the bottom here. Becca has got some plans to put in some sort of little hatches on the inside, some doors, some little wooden ones. So we're going to have like double hatches. Does that sound mad? It's uh, going to help sort of in the winter months, maybe a bit of security and hopefully look cosmetically beautiful. Let's see what's going on out there. Oh, it's you. Ah. Smelt some burning going on. Blowtorch, baby. You're going pretty mad on now. Before it was like the odd little black patch. Now it's the whole bloody thing's going black. Yeah, because I realised if you want to get that sort of natural looking grain, you have to go to this extent first and then why I brush it back. What does he want? Living dangerously. What is it? I don't want to get bitten. It's not a horse fly, is it? Everything's a horse fly with me at the moment. Becca sort of described to me what a horse fly does, and now it's like the only thing I ever go on about. Everything's a horse fly, and I'm just jumping around everywhere if something lands on me. It's great for me. Put the oil on first, so the oil helps with this process to give it an even nice, nicer sort of char grilled kind of look. Does anyone know what these little things are that come out off out the back? You see, I saw them on a few narrow boats. Just out of curiosity, I'm just going to sand this with a little bit of sandpaper so that it's all ready for when we put the uh, varnish over here on. Is it varnish? There's our lovely new varnish. So it's a deep mahogany, quick drying function. So I'm just going to sand it down a little bit here, ready to put a bit of varnish on, and it should hopefully bring back sort of its nice colour I think. Round the old side off a little bit as well, that'll make it look nice won't it? Because at the moment I don't really want to show it to Bex. <laughs> Officer it looks all professional again for the next buyer. No, I'm telling you by the time we've finished all this work on the Wombat we are not going to be selling it. It's a lifer. They say your second boat that you buy is normally your favourite boat or the best boat. I understand that now more than ever because when we viewed this boat it's all the little bits and bobs you don't check. All the, uh, all the little fittings and stuff that you don't think of when you first walk onto your new narrow boat. You've never seen one before, you walk on, you just sort of love sort of what you're seeing and if it feels right, but you just forget to look at all the little sort of detail of all the little bits. Things like this. We never really look much into things like this. I'm gonna get a bit of varnish on there too. Not sure really what you're meant to do. Sort of blagging it really. The old blagaroonie. I imagine you've probably got to give it a couple of coats as well, haven't you? You proud? I am really chuffed. So the day came this weekend where I donned my blowtorch and nervously took to my worktops to try and kind of age them a bit. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Like it's really beautiful working with the wood because you don't know what patterns are gonna erupt like as you char it. And so it's all come out really nicely. And I've put my Danish oil on there. So um, leave that to dry now and then they're pretty much ready to be re like installed, so cool times. I've just realised we've forgotten to put a sink in. Yeah, no washing allowed on this boat. I don't want to show that bit. Why not? It's warped. That's all right. <laughs> I'll hold it down. You can hold it there. No, no. And the, uh, a few people thought it was a bad idea because the wood might get burnt here, but we're actually going to take the head off from the uh, cooker and have it actually raised, fit in. fit in the top of that. So yeah, do not worry, we're not going to set ourselves on fire just yet. See, so the sink will obviously go here, the old big butler f sink. I think it's called the butler sink. There's another name for it as well, but you know, the big old bad boy sink that looks like a urinal will be slotting in here somewhere and then we will we're going to get rid of this as well so it won't just be hiding under there 